This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and today is the last program this week that I'm here with Mr. Joseph Z. Oh, it's so good to be with you. Have this we is, had a good time together? We have. I've enjoyed this. It's just been great, and I want to thank you for coming all the way to Moscow. It's a privilege to be in Moscow. You're my first guest in the studio. Oh, what an honor. What an This studio is so anointed, and the presence of God resides here. You can just sense Him. Praise God. Yeah. Well, Joseph and I are just talking back and forth and on the couch about prophetic things and about how to demystify <laughs> the prophetic. Amen. It is such a mystery to many people. It is. And today we're going to talk about solving prophetic enigmas. Yes. It's going to be good. Okay. But this five-part series will be a blessing to you or to anybody that's interested in prophetic ministry. And I like Joseph says that we're right-sizing the prophetic ministry because there's been a lot of mistakes. We need to get it right and not throw away the gift of prophecy or the gift of the prophet. It's very important. So please order this and remember that it comes with a study guide. Mr. Z, would you please take those from me? Absolutely. And we're also offering you Joseph's book, which is called Demystifying the Prophetic. And the four words are written by Lance Wallnow and me. And uh, this is a great book. I read it from cover to cover. And today is the last day that we're offering it on the program. So please don't miss this opportunity. And we're also offering you my book, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. Is that a cool man, book? Man, ever? do I like that book. I, uh, thank you for letting me endorse it. Oh, I'm so glad you did. The subtitle says, How the Events of Noah's Ark and the Flood are Relevant to the End of the Age. Anyway, this book is it's really something. But hey, I want us to open our Bibles, right? Okay, ready? let's do that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're talking about enigmas okay. and how to solve prophetic enigmas. So when you come to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 9, Paul says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. Well, notice he says in part twice. In Greek, it says ek miros. And a little translation would be we know in pieces and we prophesy in pieces. Well, let's talk about knowing. I'm a Bible teacher. I'm other things, but I also teach the Bible. Oh, yes. I know my part. Yes. But I don't know everything. We know in part. There are some parts I know really, really well. But, you know, every year I speak at the Kenneth Copeland Ministers Conference in Dallas in the month of January. And in that meeting, I love it because every speaker brings his part. Very good. He brings his piece. And every piece is crystal clear, but it takes all the pieces coming together for us to really hear everything that God wants us to hear. I'm not complete without the other pieces. They're not complete without mine. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. And you know, when I was growing up, my grandmother Renner yeah. loved jigsaw puzzles. Is that right? She always had a jigsaw puzzle on her table. How do you, how do you usually start with a jigsaw puzzle? Look at the picture. You start with the, with the edges. Oh, okay. It's easier to put the edges together. Okay. So, so let's say we've all put together our edges, and now we have like a, a, fr a frame of jigsaw pieces, but nothing in the middle. All you have is just the edges. Wow. You've got to work on it and work on it and work on it and figure out how to put all the pieces together. And when you bring all the pieces together, then you really see the whole picture. And we know in part, in pieces, we also prophesy in pieces which means it takes all of us to really come together and to get the whole counsel of God. And we need to have a humility that we need each other and we need to have a deep appreciation of each other. But wait, there's one more thing here. Listen to this in verse 12. Paul says, for now we see through a glass darkly, mm. darkly. Well, guess what? The word darkly in Greek is pronounced enigma. <laughs> it is the word enigma. Enigma. Now, when you see that word glass, it can mean two things, and I'm going to tell you about both of them. First of all, it can describe Roman glass, and that's what this is. This is a slag of real Roman glass. It's a very beautiful, deep blue, and if you hold it up to the light, 
you can see lights or bursts of light coming through it. But Joseph, it's not clear. No, it's not. You can't see through to the other side. You can see light bursting. But you can see light bursting through. Yes. And sometimes our knowledge in prophetic ministry is like that. We see bursts of light where, God, where we know God is saying something to us, but we may not see it absolute clear. Yes. It's a little bit of an enigma. Yes, it is. We're thankful for the light, but we don't see it all by ourselves. But that word glass is also the word for a Roman mirror, and that probably is the more accurate meaning. And this is a real mirror from about the second century BC. They would shine this part of it. They would hold it like this. And it was made of metal. Okay. Well, even if you shine it and shine it and shine it and shine it and shine it, it's metal. Yes. This this is not a silver lined piece of glass. This is metal. Okay. So for you to get a proper image, you have to look at it from here. You got to shine it up some more. You got to look at it from here. <laughs> you got to look at yourself from every angle because it was a blurry image. You got to really, really look at it from every single angle. And here the Apostle Paul is teaching. We need to look at things from many different angles to get the full picture. That's good. And often when truth begins to come to us, we see it in part, we understand it in part. It's a little bit of enigma. We see bursts of light, bursts of revelation. And sometimes people want to run with what they've seen before they really understand it. Yes. That's when you make a mistake. Or they add their own interpretation to it before they really see the full picture. You got to bring all the pieces together. You always make a mistake when you do that. So many times prophetic words are an enigma. And I want to use the example of Abraham, please. God spoke to Abraham and said, you can read it in Genesis chapter 12. I want you and your wife to come alone. There it is. Leave your father, leave your family and follow me. Yes. Well, that seems pretty clear. It does. But to Abraham, that was an enigma <laughs> because he was responsible for his father. Lot had become like his adoptive son. And it was an enigma to him. How, how, what do you mean? God wants me to leave. God wants me to follow. But could God really mean that I'm to disrespect my father by leaving my father behind? Would God really want me to be so irresponsible that I would leave my nephew Lot, who's become like my adopted son? And this was such an enigma to him that he added his own understanding to it. And that's what made a whole mess it, uh, of the first part of his walk of faith. Wow. And so it was an enigma to him that God would really want him to do those things. Yes. But that really is what God said. That is what God said. And so what you've been talking about, navigating prophetic experiences and going through the process of developing discernment. Yes. Really understanding before you take action. Yes. It's really very important. It really is, Rick. And you know, it's interesting there's ways to navigate, discern, but then there really is moments in the office of the prophet where the Lord will just download something. Yes, and th give those you, moments come. They do. And it's a time where there will be an interpretation of an enigma or a gift for it. And we find that with the prophet Daniel in the Old Testament, where Daniel in, in chapter 5, verse 12 it speaks of how he was not only 10 times better and his friends were 10 times better than all the soothsayers, the Chaldeans, all the magicians and all those things. But then it talks about that he had the ability to solve riddles, riddles, riddles. And that word, when I've studied it, it really talks about like an impossible knot, like a knot that you just can't untie and like an enigma. And it's, it's in this position where they, they don't know how to fix it. People don't know what to do. So Daniel had a gift to walk into an impossible scenario. And I think it's a true prophetic apostolic anointing, actually, where you walk into impossible scenarios and through the word of the Lord, either interpret it, correct it, resolve it, like an ax head floating, like going into a territory like an apostle where it's impossible to do something, but you do it anyway. And I like what you say, anointing, God gives you the anointing that will move hell out of the way. I believe that there is an anointing that comes on some of these leaders and prophetic voices, particularly that will have a now word an instantaneous revelation of exactly what the interpretation is and what to do and solve the riddle. And I think that's a missing piece in some of our geopolitical issues, some of our 
church government issues is that sometimes when the fivefold ministry comes in truly under the word of the Lord, the unction of the spirit, they can say, go to the street called straight, stand there. And this is how it's going to begin to unfold. That was pretty clear. I think that's pretty clear. And I think that is what we're missing in some of these areas of it. Enigmas, navigation, and all of it. We need the true word of the Lord with men and women of God that are clear-eyed, clear-minded. They hear God. They get past the silliness of it all, and they're able to truly be a weapon in the hand of the Lord. So how do people listening to us today find those people that are past the silliness of it all? Well, I think they listen to Rick Renner. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I actually mean that. I think when you inundate yourself in the healthy teaching of the Word of God, whatever your gift is. If you're craving prophecy, you can grow in it, but you can't crave a five-fold ministry office and just become that. No, it's the they're, Lord they're, does their gifts. The Lord does that. But when you listen to teaching like yours, you listen to teaching over and over again until it just becomes part of you, your gift is going to come apart or alive by default. Well, you know, you've been quoting Hebrews chapter 5 this week about through the Use, you become... Reason of use. Reason of use. Exercise. You develop discernment. That's right. That whole text is about the Bible. Yes. And when you really exercise yourself in the Word of God, you already are leagues ahead of the rest of the gang. Wow. You have a sense of discernment. It's a spiritual common sense. It doesn't take you long to recognize what's right, what's wrong. You're so exercised by the Word of God. Yes. You know, other people are laboring, trying to figure things out. You already, you have the answer like this. Yep. And it's not because you're so smart, it's because the Word of God really has the ability to develop discernment in you. Yes, that's so powerful. That's one thing I love about your prophetic ministry is because it's so connected to the Bible. It has to be, Rick. It has to be. Or you will absolutely, as a prophetic minister, you will get off. It's not a matter of if, it's when. Because there's so many experiences. I have a lot of experiences. I experience things, I talk about them very seldom the ones I have routinely and things. Because the Bible says, 1 Corinthians uh, 4, verse 6, learn from us to not go beyond what is written. There's something to be said, though, for true apostles and prophets that are stepping up in a culture and leading the way for the body of Christ. I believe things begin to happen when God's real fivefold ministers walk into their calling, walk in their anointing, and just obey Him. There's something powerful to be said about that. When prophets begin to pray, intercede, and spend time with the Lord. I believe that's part of their process, just like all the fivefold. But there's something unique about the Apostle and Prophet. And I love your book, Apostles and Prophets. Oh, thank you. Something that's unique, I believe, is this. I believe apostles are chosen, and I believe prophets are grown. Because uh, uh, apostles, it's almost like when I've seen things even prophetically on, on true apostolic leaders, I see the word chosen on them. When I see prophets, it's like they go through, I don't know, fire, hammering, stuff like that. Well, look at the example of the prophet Samuel. Yeah. I mean, he had to learn the voice of God, but we all have to learn the voice of God. We all have to learn We all have God. to. But the Samuel's story is so similar to yours. It's true. I mean, he heard a voice call him three times. He thought it was Eli. Yeah. And it was Eli who finally had to say, go back and say, here I am, your servant's. <laughs> Yeah. E Eli had to say, that's God speaking to you. Yeah, that's true. And I think that the, in the prophetic gift, that's true of all the gifts. You got you got to grow in your gifting. You yeah. got to give yourself to it. That's true, Rick. But Joseph, a lot of our people listening to us today, they're not prophets. That's right. They're people who just want to be able to solve the enigma. Yeah, they can hear God. Well, you hear God by watching the broadcast, listening to the Lord Jesus through the word of God being preached. Pray, I'll use this word, Pray in tongues, copious amounts. Pray in the Spirit and pray in the Spirit some more. Spend time in the written Word of God, and the Word of God will become clear. It'll take anxiety away. It'll right-size. It'll sharpen you. And surround yourself with people who have solid voices. Oh, that's important. You know, I have a team around me, and God speaks to me through my team as much as God just speaks directly to me. And sometimes I feel like I have a word from the Lord about how we're to move forward as a ministry, that they will bring that other piece we're talking about. That's so important. And that's the missing piece. And even though I may have a general understanding of what we're to do, like, okay, I'm gonna give you an example. Right now in, in the Russian speaking world, we have the largest online Russian speaking church in the entire world. It's amazing. We have about 200, 
and 30,000 people that are active participants. That is a very big church. It's tremendous. That's stadiums of people. It's tremendous. I had the word. I knew what we were to do. But it took everybody on my team to open the enigma because I, I didn't know how to do it. I had the word, but I didn't know how to do it. So when you surround yourself by people that you trust and by people that are godly and you know that they have good common sense, but they have an ear for the spirit. Yes. You begin to bring all the pieces together to open the enigma of what you're supposed to do. It will answer your questions. This is really very important. The Lord wants to answer us more than we want to hear him. Well, Jesus said, you just have to have ears to hear. That's He's right. speaking all the time. All the time. You know, there are people that, who say that God didn't speak in the intertestamental years <laughs> between the Old and the New Testament. It's not true. That's not true. God has always been speaking. Always. He just had a hard time finding somebody who had an ear to hear. That's right. Hardness of heart is a big thing. You know, something to be said about this, and this is what I find um, the most challenging for hearing God or solving the enigma or hearing God for yourself is clutter, just cl busyness, uh, offense is a big one. If you're in the middle of strife and turmoil or some kind of difficult challenge, it can be really hard to hear the voice of God. And those things come to clutter up the water, to muddy the water so you don't hear God. And that is why we've got to maintain the word of God in our heart. That's why we got to read, that's why we got to pray, and you will begin to hear God. And it's great that we eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, but especially that we prophesy. When you hear God and you have an unction and a desire to prophesy, it doesn't make you a prophet, but you can do it and you will solve enigmas that way. You will see things, you will hear things. You know, I say this a lot, but if things are too small, men fight, you know, the body of Christ. But if things are big enough, men unite. And I believe the Lord is looking for a unification. Would you say that again? If things are too small in the body of Christ or in the world, that's when men fight, they squabble. But if something is monumental and big enough and you recognize it, that's when people unite. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But when they do that, that is something that's worth recognizing and applying towards these type of prophetic gifts. Because the body of Christ needs to hear God like never before. We need to be in tune with him like never before. And I believe there's been a lot of shrapnel, a lot of religion that has come against the prophetic a lot of friendly fire. A lot of friendly fire. They do it to themselves. <laughs> They're like, I will step on that rake and enjoy it. <laughs> you know? And a lot of people do that when it's not necessary. What we really need to do is come back to the simplicity of the Word of God, celebrate these gifts, right-size them, and, and develop them through the Word of God. Well, I just want to say we're told not to despise prophecy. That would also mean prophets. And I said in a previous program this week that there's a lot of nutty stuff on YouTube, and there really is. There is. A lot of nutty stuff. <laughs> and it's pretty entertaining. Some of it's pretty distressing. Yes. And uh, make sure you tune into a voice that you can respect and follow. Yes. We're told to know those who minister among us. It's good. For me, Joseph, I don't even listen to the news Yeah. until I know where the re reporter went to school. Wow. Where they were trained because... That's going to be the slant of the news they're going to give me. That's right. So when Denise and I are watching the news, I'm online looking up that person. Where did they go to school? Where did they get their education? I, I want to know who's bringing me the news. Wow. In the same way, you need to know who's ministering to you. Who do they run with? Who's in their circle? Who are they in submission to? And if you're listening to somebody on the Internet or on YouTube and they're not connected to anybody else, you need to be very careful. It's true. The Bible calls those people wandering stars. Mm. They might be real stars, but they're out of orbit. They're not moving in orbit with anybody else. That's always a signal that you need to be very careful of that person. Well, that's one of the words in Matthew 24, Rick. The cause to wander. Cause to wander. That's what false prophets do. They cause to wander. People may not be fully deceived in their salvation, but they never acquire or attain their calling and purpose. It's one reason why I'm so committed to the group that I orbit with. Yes. I mean, I want to be in a good group of people who love God, love each other, and who will correct each other, help each other. Yes, sir. It's so very important. Joseph, we have had a full week of wonderful programs. We have. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you again. Would you come back with me in the fall and do it again? I would be honored to. I really would, Rick. I, you know, you're like my favorite person. 
Well, thank you, Justin. And I, I'm really honored to be with you, and um, I've learned so much from you. Well, when we come, thank you. I've learned a lot from you, too. But when we come back to the next program, let's get out the whiteboard. Okay, we'll do that. And we'll go for it. We'll do that this fall. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. But I just personally want to say thank you for coming to Moscow, you and Heather. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your ministry. By the way, you want to know more about Joseph? His information's on the screen right now. Please look him up. He is a wonderful, wonderful prophetic brother. But hey, we're not done yet, so stay with me, and we'll be back in just a moment. Someone has asked the question, can a reprobate mind be reversed, or is it permanent? My friends, it can be reversed. But what is a reprobate mind? Well, the word reprobate in Greek is the word adikimos. It describes a mind which is brilliantly fashioned by God, but that mind has been subjected to the bombardment of wrong images and wrong information, and all of that information has twisted the mind so that it no longer thinks as God intended for it to think. It really thinks wrong and believes that it's right. That's why it's called reprobate. But when we come to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, the Bible says that you put off concerning the former conversation or your old way of thinking. And then in verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, which means if you will allow your mind to be bombarded by truth instead of wrong images and wrong information, truth will reform your mind and renew it so you begin to think in alignment with God's Word once again. It takes a strong decision to do this, but it means even a reprobate mind can be put back in shape. Many people claim to be prophets today. Some are, and some are not. And a lot of attention has been given to the subject of prophetic ministry on social media and the internet that has caused confusion. But in this informative series, Rick Renner and Joseph Z push back the confusion to bring clarity to the body of Christ on this vital subject. In Demystifying the Prophetic with Joseph Z, you'll learn how to recognize a real prophet, the marks of a false prophet, how to discern whether a prophetic word is true or false. This powerful five-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. We are also offering Joseph Z's masterful new book, Demystifying the Prophetic, Understanding the Voice of God for the Coming Days of Fire. It is vital that we understand exactly what the Bible says on this subject in this 448-page book, loaded with insights that are both spiritual and practical will help you understand the ministry of the prophet. Rick Renner says, this book holds answers that will thrill the hungry heart and set it on a course to take it into the deep things of God. Demystifying the Prophetic by Joseph Z is available today for $25. Don't miss this special offer. Bundle the series Demystifying the Prophetic with Joseph Z and the accompanying book Demystifying the Prophetic. And for a limited time, we are also offering Rick's book Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the world before the flood for a special pre-sale discounted price. Go to renner.org to order. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner. You might ask, Rick, where are you? Well, this is one of the additional television studios for our TBV network, which is our Russian channel, which covers all the 11 time zones of Russia. Did you hear that? Russia has 11 time zones. And in those 11 time zones are people looking for Bible teaching, news, information. And in this particular studio, we do interviews, we do talk shows, we do news, we even do the weather. And it's all packaged to bring the teaching of the Word of God into people's homes across 11 time zones. But in addition to TBV, we also have GNC, which is our international satellite network, which covers 83 nations of the world. So wherever Russian speakers are living, we're reaching them with the teaching of the Word of God, either through TBV or GNC. And that is amazing. You know, when Denise and I first began our ministry, God gave us Romans 10, 18, which said their voice would go into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. And have we ever seen that come to pass? And one reason we've been able to do it is because of our partners, which help us. 
And partners, I want to say thank you for helping us with TVV, the national channel in Russia, and GNC, the satellite network, which is reaching into 83 nations of the world. Together, we're really reaching people. And if you're not a part of that giving team yet, please pray about becoming a part of the team to take the Word of God on one of these two networks to Russian speakers all over the world. Well, today we have wrapped up a full week of programs with me and Joseph Z. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. It has been such a, may I say something very quickly to your partners? Okay. I would just want to look at you very quickly. Partners, if you're a part of Rick Renner and this ministry, I want to thank you because my wife and I are fruit of your partnership with this ministry. What you've done for Rick and standing with this ministry has created sons and daughters all over the world. It's helped people grow and it's really helped our ministry bloom. And I want to thank you again for partnering with our dear friend, Rick Renner. We love you so much. Thank you, partners. You are precious. And I want to say thanks. Thank you, sir. Hey, but I want you to have the series that we've been doing this week. Did you enjoy this week? Would you please write to me and let me know if you've enjoyed this time with Joseph Z. But it's called Demystifying the Prophetic and it comes with the study guide. And today is the last day that we're offering Joseph's book called Demystifying the Prophetic, Understanding the Voice of God for the Coming Days of Fire. And wow, for the days that we are headed to, we really need to understand the voice of God. That is the truth. Amen. But anyhow, thank you for being with us. And if you have a prayer need, reach out to us because we're waiting for the phone to ring right now so we can release our faith and pray and watch what God does, and he'll do something wonderful. But Joseph, thank you. Oh, sir. Let's pray one more time. Let's do it. Father, thank you for the privilege that we can be together this week. It is such an honor to come into people's space and to speak the word of God. Thank you for the privilege. I thank you for my friend. And dear friend, I want to remind you of Ecclesiastes 8.4, which yes. says, where the word of a king is, there it is, is power. power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.